Today, we're gonna to talk about experimental design. First, we're gonna talk about the completely randomized experiment. In a completely randomized experiment, random assignment of subjects are given treatments. We identify at least one explanatory variable, which is the factor to manipulate, and one response variable, what you are measuring. Humans are often called subjects are participants, and other individuals are called experimental units. And by other individuals, we mean animals or bacteria in a Petri dish. The experimental unit receives a treatment, and there's often a control group. When using an analogy, completely randomized experiments is to experiments as simple random samples is to sampling. Second, we're gonna talk about randomized block experiment. In a randomized block experiment, we divide the subjects into representative groups called blocks. Subjects in each block are randomly assigned treatments, and the randomization occurs within the blocks. When using an analogy with random block experiments, random block experiments is to experiments as stratified is to sampling. Third, we're gonna talk about the match pairs experiment. In a match pairs experiment, two treatments are compared based on the responses of paired subjects, one of whom receives one treatment while the other receives the second treatment. Often the paired subjects are really single subjects who are given both treatments. A match pairs experiment usually involves each person being his or her own control. For example, if I want to test whether carrying books causes people with limited vision to veer more, I would test each person blindfolded with and without books. Let's look at an example. A large study used records from Canada's national healthcare system to compare the effectiveness of two ways to treat prostate disease. The two treatments are traditional surgery and a new method that does not require surgery. The records describe many patients whose doctors had chosen each method. The study found that patients treated by the new method were significantly more likely to die within eight years. Further study of data showed that this conclusion was wrong. The extra deaths among patients who got the new method could be explained by Lurkin variables. What Lurkin variables might be confounded with a doctor's choice of surgical or non-surgical treatment? So take a moment and pause the video to think about this and come up with an answer. With the Lurkin variables, the doctor might choose no surgery method for patients with little chance of surviving. Surgery is costly and more risky, especially if very ill. So patients are more likely not to recover and might get the new method. Therefore, the new method looks worse. Using the same example of the study, we have 300 prostate patients who are willing to serve as subjects in an experiment to compare the two methods. Suppose we believe the progression of the disease might affect the recovery rate for a specific treatment. Discuss how you would run the experiment. We're gonna use two different designs. We're gonna use the completely randomized design and the randomized block design. In a completely randomized design, I have my 300 patients. I randomly allocate 150 of my patients to group one, which is treatment one, which is surgery, and to group two, which is treatment two, the new method. Then after I give them their treatment, I compare the recovery rates of the two groups. In a randomized block design, we have 300 patients. 
we have the severe cases and we write have a number of severe cases and we have a number of less severe cases. They're not necessarily the same amount. Within this block of severe cases, we randomly allocate group one to treatment one and group two to treatment two. And the numbers are based off the severe cases here. In our block of less severe cases, we randomly allocate a number to treatment one and a number to treatment two. And these two numbers are based on how many less severe cases we have. And then we take and compare the recovery rates of the two groups.